Welcome to the flock. Let's dive into calculating for cell potentials to be able to solve problems just like this one. Stick around to see how it's done. In order to solve for cell potential, we have to look up a table containing half reactions that each have their own unique voltage. When you look up these standard reduction potentials in a table, make sure you are finding the correct half reaction with the correct charges associated with the chemicals or atoms that we are looking at. So for example, if we wanted to know how much voltage could be produced between a reaction of cadmium and magnesium, we could look up the half reaction for cadmium and magnesium in a standard reduction potential table, which would be here for magnesium and here for cadmium. So looking over to our table, we can see what the half reaction voltage would be for both cadmium and for magnesium. The objective here, when we're trying to calculate for cell potential between two different metals, one of which has to play the reduction half and the other has to play the oxidation half from the half reactions lesson that we just previously learned, check out the link in the description below for half reactions if you're still not sure where those come from, and we want to be able to add those together to yield a positive overall cell potential value. So we want positive voltage, in other words. And also remember that the electrons have to cancel, just as we learned in our half reactions lesson. So the electrons will always have to be on opposite sides. For the reduction half reaction, the electrons are on the reactant side. And for the oxidation half reaction, the electrons are on the product side. So let's give it a try with these two half reactions. For cadmium, we're going to write out its half reaction, CD plus two aqueous plus two electrons forms CD no charge, solid. And the value associated with that is negative 0.40. Whereas for magnesium, we have Mg plus two aqueous plus two electrons to form magnesium solid with a value of negative 2.37 volts. Now, if we were to add these together as is, we would end up with a negative 2.77. That's not what we want. Again, we want an overall cell potential represented by the following to be equal to some positive value in volts. So we need to flip one of these equations around in order to end up with a positive answer when we add the two values together. If we were to flip this one around, 0 0.40 becoming positive, if we add these two values together, we would still end up with a negative value, albeit a smaller negative number, but still a negative number. The goal is to have a positive final answer. So flipping around this equation will do nothing for us. However, if we flip around this equation, that should give us a positive 2.37 voltage. So let's try that. Now when we add together those two values, we do end up with a positive value of 1.97 volts. Notice how automatically we then know that cadmium would have to be the reduction half and magnesium would have to be the oxidation half. This is because the electrons are on the reactant side for reduction halves and the electrons are on the product side for oxidation halves. When we flipped this equation around, it also fulfilled the necessity of being able to cancel our electrons from reactant to product side. So our overall equation between cadmium and magnesium would be CD plus two plus magnesium standard goes to CD standard plus magnesium plus two. And that would give us an overall cell potential of plus 1.97 volts. Now that you've seen me try one of these, go ahead and pause the video here and see if you can figure out the voltage or the cell potential between these two half reactions. Ready, go. All right, let's see if you got the concept down. The 1.09 came from the table here for this half reaction, and the negative 0.13 came from this half reaction here with lead. However, we can't add these two together even though that would give us a positive value still. As written, our electrons wouldn't cancel. So one of these equations still needs to flip around so the electrons can cancel. The only equation we can flip that would still give us a positive overall answer when adding the voltages together would be the lead equation. So let's rewrite the lead equation flipped around. That would be PB, P2, 
peanut butter jelly time goes to PB plus two plus two electrons. And that also flips this sign from negative to positive. So now what ends up happening is 1.09 plus 0.13 gives us a final value of plus 122 volts for our final cell potential. What about if we're given an equation first and we have to calculate the cell potential for the equation given and not just between any random two metals that we want to try. The first thing we need to do is write out the half reactions for this overall chemical equation. In order to do so, we need to write the oxidation states above each and determine which one gains or loses electrons. The copper went from a plus two charge to a zero charge. That means it must have gained electrons, which means that it is the place where reduction was occurring. So let's write out the reduction half reaction first. That would be copper plus two plus two electrons to form copper no charge. And we see from the table below that that exact half reaction as written is plus 0.34 volts. Now I gave these values to you down here, but you would have to look them up on a table online or in the back of a textbook. How about the oxidation half reaction? We go from aluminum zero to aluminum plus three. That means it must have lost electrons to become more positive. Therefore, it's going to represent the oxidation half reaction. But now if we look down at the table, we notice that the reaction is written as Al plus three plus three electrons forms Al solid. That's actually the reverse of what we've just written. We need to make sure that our cell potentials are going to match as written from the equation. So again, we aren't just willy nilly picking out whatever two half reactions we wanna to add together like we did before. Now we need to make sure that our half reactions and thus also our voltages will match the equation as it is written. In this case, we're going to have to flip around this one to yield the value in order for it to match what is given to us in our actual chemical equation. So when we flip this equation here, we have to make this value positive. So up here, we would now have plus 1.66 as opposed to the negative value. Now you might remember from the previous video about half reactions that we would have to balance these because currently the two electrons would not cancel with three electrons. We would have to multiply this bottom equation by two and that two would get multiplied throughout in order to make this six and now two everywhere else. And the top equation would have to be multiplied by three, which would again multiply throughout three times the copper, three times the electrons would give us six and three again in front of the copper. Now we could see that the electrons would indeed cancel. However, notice I did not multiply this one by three and I did not multiply this one by two. We are not going to mess with the electric potential values when we mess with balancing the electrons. So leave the electric potential voltage values alone. Do not multiply them. But now that we do have the balanced half reactions, we are going to want to add together the voltages we were given. And when we do so, we get a final electric potential value of two volts. Also, just as a quick reminder, since the copper is the one that's the reduction half, it's also referred to as the oxidizing agent. And since the aluminum is the oxidation half, it's referred to as the reducing agent. Now that you've seen me split apart one chemical equation into its half reactions in order to calculate for the cell potential, go ahead and pause the video here and see if you can solve it for this chemical reaction. Let's check your answer. It matches. Does not match, we gotta flip it. Hopefully you got that answer, and if you did, pat yourself on the back. What about an equation that has more than just two different species we're looking at? Well, let's take a look at this one. First, we need to assign the charges throughout. We know that by reverse drop and swap, the two will go up here. So this tin has a plus two charge and chlorine has a minus one charge. From reverse drop and swap, this three will go up here. So iron has a plus three charge and chlorine has a minus one charge. From over here, this tin will have a plus four charge instead and chlorine still has a minus one charge. And over here we have 
2 on the iron, plus 2, and still minus 1 for chlorine. So hopefully you can see right away that the chlorines haven't changed charge anywhere throughout this entire reaction. So chlorine is what we call a spectator ion. In other words, it's not doing anything. So we're not going to include it in the calculations either because it's not doing anything. So the fact that I included the chlorine down here in the electric potential table was just to throw you off. We don't need to include it when we're calculating for cell potential. So let's just cross that off. We're gonna forget that the chlorines even exist in this scenario. Ah, that's better. Now let's see how the chemicals have changed. From iron, we went from a plus three charge to a plus two charge. It became less positive. And the only way you can do that is by gaining something that's intrinsically negative. So it must have gained electrons, meaning it was the reduction half. Whereas in the case of tin, it went from a plus two charge to a plus four charge. It became even more positive. That means it must have lost something that was intrinsically negative, i.e. electrons. Therefore, it's the oxidation half. I always start by writing the reduction half of the reaction because it's easier to think about the electrons being added to the reactant side in the reduction half reaction. So here we have Fe plus three plus some number of electrons that's added to it in order to create Fe plus two. We went down by plus one, so that means we must have added one electron in order for that to happen. And looking down at our cell potential table, which again, I gave you here, but you would have to look up online or in the back of a textbook, we see that that as written is a voltage of 0.77. Also keep in mind that there are many iron reduction half reactions. Make sure you're picking the correct one. In this case, the plus three charge plus one electron going to a plus two charge. Sometimes you might also see one that would be iron plus three plus three electrons going to iron zero. That's going to have a completely different number value for the voltage. Make sure you're picking the correct one that matches your reaction. And now for the oxidation half, which is all about tin. So Sn plus two had to lose some number of electrons in order to be a plus four charge. Well, to go from plus two to plus four, we must have lost two electrons. If we look down at our table, we notice that this is exactly the reverse of what we were given. So we can't use the plus one five, we have to flip this around in order for it to match our reaction as written. So that would actually be minus 0.15 when we flip it. Before we add those two numbers together, let's make sure our electrons actually cancel. In this case, they do not. There's only one here and two here. So we need to multiply the top equation by two. That would give us two electrons here, two irons, two irons. Again, we do not multiply this by two. We are not going to do that. We leave the cell potential values alone. Now, when we add these together, we get a cell potential of plus 0.62 volts as our final answer. Again, just as another little helpful reminder, the reduction half reaction, the iron in this case, is going to be the oxidizing agent and the tin, in this case, since it's the oxidation half reaction, is going to be the reducing agent. All right, here's the last practice question. Go ahead and pause the video here and see if you can solve the cell potential for the following chemical reaction. On your marks, get set, go! Let's check your work. So your final cell potential here should be plus 3.15 volts. Remember that the overall equation is just bringing these all down. So F2 plus nickel forming two F minus ones plus nickel plus two. So that would be the overall equation and its associated voltage. In this lesson, we went over how to calculate for cell potentials. Following these steps will help you do so. First thing you need to do is split the redox reaction into balanced half reactions. Make sure that you have electrons on the reactant side for the reduction half and that you have electrons on the product side for the oxidation half. Once you've done so, you can look up cell potential volt values for each half reaction accordingly from a cell potential table online or in the back of your textbook. The third thing you need to do 
is to flip the sign, whether that's a negative to a positive or a positive to a negative, of the volt value for one of the half reactions, inevitably, because you're going to need to have it written according to the half reactions you determined previously. So make sure those electrons do cancel, that there is one on the reactant side and there is one on the product side. Now, if you do happen to change the value or the number of electrons by multiplying in a coefficient, do not multiply your volt value by that same coefficient. The only thing you should be doing to the volt value is flipping the sign in order for it to match your equation as written. Once you've done so, you can add together those voltage cell potentials and you may end up with a positive value, which just basically means that your battery or your galvanic cell is spontaneous. It's going to occur on its own, essentially. And if your answer is a negative value, that's what we call non-spontaneous. It's not really something that wants to happen all on its own. So if you are given a chemical reaction, yes, you can end up with a negative voltage or a positive voltage. If you are not given a chemical reaction and you're just given, say, a list of cell potentials and you're asked to add two together, you're going to do so in such a way that would give you a spontaneous battery. Chickity check yourself before you wreck yourself and make sure that you can calculate for the cell potential for the following redox reaction. If you wanna know if you got your answer right, comment below and I will let you know. Please give this video a giant cool wax up and when you're out of luck in chemistry, subscribe to The Duck. I promise it's electrifying. Quack you later. No ducks, no glory.